Hi, it's me again, and I'm back for another video, even though I was here last week, and it's Thursday morning, uh, about 9.30. I'm on my second pot of coffee. So hopefully you're having coffee with me whenever you watch this or whatever you like to drink. Um, I am reshooting this video. I actually did it yesterday. I can't believe this. This is the first time I've had to do this. Um, this morning I was trying to edit it because there was two parts in it where I kept saying the wrong word over and over. One, I kept saying chart instead of sampler and antique sampler. I mean, it was just totally not even the same subject. And I did it like 80 million times. And then um, there was another part where I was talking about my last giveaway and the keyword, and I said the wrong keyword 80 million times. Normally those flubs I'll just let go. And I was gonna try and insert, you know, the text correction through the video. And then I realized, well, I could just actually cut it out because I was kind of rambling about you know, something that didn't need to be there. And this morning I was getting a lawnmower delivery and I was working on editing, editing it. And instead of cutting out that small little chunk where I started misspeaking, I cut out the whole first part of my video. So I was like, son of a biscuit, I'm gonna have to redo it. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Thankfully, I had just kind of tossed everything in my bedroom closet and it was easy to pull out again. Um, and it may be a little shorter than the last one because I don't have time. Um, this video and the next one are going to be a little different, possibly a little shorter than I normally do and not as much current updating. Um, I have a little bit of a whip to show you on this video, but as far as linen updates and stuff, um, I just did a video a week ago. Situation's the same, um, not much to report there other than, like I said in my last video, I have help coming in on Saturday. And so I really expect the next two weeks for stuff to start flying out the, flying out the door like crazy. So customer and shop orders. And I will update on Instagram. Um, I will definitely update the shops that are going out. Um, if you are waiting on an order that is not a 40 count order that you're waiting for, um, hang tight because, uh, I think we're really going to get a lot out and, um, you know, that's my goal is to get all of those out. So if you've been waiting for an order, um, that's not waiting for base fabric and you've been waiting a while, it is coming very soon. So, um, you know, sometimes I get, which is fine. And I have always said, you're welcome to email me and check on an order. Um, I do get a lot of those, especially when the wait is that long. And a lot of times people are just checking to make sure I haven't lost the order, um, which I haven't. So, uh, yeah, so I'm just, there's gonna be a lot of orders going out the door for sure. We are going to be off and running on Monday. So I have <clears throat> my brother-in-law coming in on Saturday night. And this is the last week of school for my kids. So um, it's been a crazy busy week. And my work has been real choppy. I've been able to do a little here, a little there. And I still have a lot of stuff to try and get done. And it's already Thursday morning. I have an appointment in town this afternoon. And yesterday my son went to Mackinac Island for the eighth grade field trip and brought me some fudge. So I had fudge and coffee for breakfast breakfast of champions. Um, today he has another event going on. Tomorrow's the graduation and a half day of school and my house is a disaster and I have someone coming to stay here and I have a lot of postage to do. I mean, it's just time is my enemy right now. So I'm doing the best I can this week and I'm very looking forward to next week. Um, you know, Saturday I'll be working in the morning for a little bit and then hopefully getting my house cleaned up and sheets washed and things like that. And um, Sunday I will probably work a half day. The weekends I probably won't work the same like I have been. Uh, my husband will be off and with his brother here that'll be a time that we can actually maybe do some 
fun stuff and relax. So I'll probably work in the mornings while they're still snoozing. And I'm not going <clears> to <throat> make my brother-in-law work on the weekends. Um, so especially if we can do double time, I feel like I can work some half days on the weekends. And then, um, you know, maybe we can do some fun family stuff, some day trips and dinners out and things like that, that um, I haven't been able to do in a long time. So I think it'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be good for me and for you guys, because I need him to help dig me out of this deep hole of orders. So thank you for your patience and your orders and ordering through me. You're supporting me and my family and you know, it's just been great. So thank you for being willing to wait and patient for your linens. And like I said, when you order through me, you're guaranteed to get it. It's just, I can't give you a time frame right now. Um, what else is going on? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Uh, last video, I did a lot of rambling and thank you. I had a lot of people that say they like the rambling. We'll get ready. Cause I can't seem to stop doing that. Talking about nothing. Um, you know, uh, that's it. I think last time I had said I was going to run errands last time, um, after my video, I think this time, it, even though it's Thursday, I may just upload it because I had such a mess with the other video that I, God, I'm ticked. I cannot believe I have to redo this. Um, I may just upload it tonight. I was going to upload on Friday like I normally do. And you may just get it a day early because... I'm over it. I'm over it. So I also have a pre-recorded video for the time period when my brother-in-law's here so that we won't have a, a real gap. And that one's kind of a mess too. My phone had maxed out its battery and so it's kind of like in four chunks and I'm hoping that I have enough storage to um, splice them together so it's a full video. So who knows? Who knows? I don't have time to refilm two videos. So if, you know, if I can't get that one chunked together, it may, it may end abruptly. You may just get the first big chunk. And <laughs> so I'm warning you now, I'm warning you now. Um, okay. So one of the things that I had flubbed on my last video was I was talking about, um, the giveaway from my last video. I had a fat quarter shop giveaway for some quilt patterns and I had said the wrong keyword. Um, I'm not drawing for that now. And the next video you see, since it's pre-recorded, there's going to be no winner. A lot of people don't necessarily watch my videos within that first few days or week. So I want to give them time to comment and get entered for the drawing. So, um, my next sort of live video, two videos from now, that was, that will be when I draw the name for the Fat Quarter Shop giveaway I showed last time. And the keyword for that was quilt. I know I have it correct this time because <laughs> I've watched that darn video like five times this morning. So go to my last video. I think it's number 14 or 15. And um, the keyword to win that giveaway is quilt. So there we go. Fix that problem. All right, let's just get down to the stitching because, you know, I got to get going. Okay, so I really didn't get, now I filmed a video a week ago. I didn't get a lot of stitching time. I, when I had filmed, I thought that night that I would really make some time and get some stitching done. And I did not. I think that was on a Friday. Didn't get any time Saturday. I died like a mad woman last weekend and I just couldn't stop, which was a good thing. Um, so Sunday, last Sunday, I started working at like 5 a.m. and at like five o'clock at night, I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I had worked such long hours for like three days straight. I was like, I need some stitching time and I need to stop. And I put in more than a full day's work. So I decided to pick up the Jane Austen sal um, that I had wanted to start during the previous week and had just not had time. And I got about two and a half hours um, after dinner Sunday night to do a start. So that's what I'm going to show you. And I'm a little bummed. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little disappointed in what happened. Okay, so this is the chart. Now I'm going to have to put on the old readers. God, my hair is still wet. I just got out of the shower. So I'm not really camera ready, but we're all friends. You guys don't care. Um... 
Plum Street Sampler's Gentleman's Daughter is what I picked for Annie B's um, Jane Austen sale. And I had posted that I had wanted to start it on Hemingway. I had done an Instagram story at my son's music choir concert and thought I would start it on Hemingway and get a few stitches in. And I didn't because I got interruptions. I got some phone calls and texts and things. And then by the time I got done with that, my son was coming out to the car. So I did not start it that night. Um, and I decided, okay, so this chart calls for Nantucket Brew, which is an R&R, &R, beautiful fabric. And in this photo, I kind of like the way it looks like a light taupey color. And like Hemingway is a lot more of a brown color. And I thought, well, maybe Steinbeck would be better. And I had a ton of, I have a ton of Steinbeck dyed. So I grabbed a piece of Steinbeck. And I like the color. I think this is definitely the linen that I want to use, but I had a couple issues. Okay. So I got, let me move my coffee so I don't spill it. So I got this tree done and I was like, wow, that looks really good. Then I moved over. I'm trying to get to where I can build the house. Um, so the roof color is basically a taupe. And it is a darker version of this, which I was fine with that. It's not, it doesn't really pop out like a dark brown would. Um, and I was like, well, that's going to look good. So then I came down here and the white that the house calls for is Weeks Dye Works Parchment. Now, parchment is a super pretty color. It's more of an ecru with some yellowy ivory. You know, it's variegated, but it's not white. And depending on what fabric you use on, it can look very pale. And I just, I don't love that the house isn't popping. And this has happened to me with Weeks Dye Works Parchment and some of the classic color works over dyed whites many times. The white that is called for when I start stitching with it, I just don't like the brightness of it. Um, I don't want it to be neon white but I feel like that is way too light, especially with one strand. Um, this is a 36 count, I think. Yeah, it's 36 count. Um, it's just too light. It's just the coverage is not what I want. And I kind of stopped doing the white and started doing the windows thinking, well, maybe the white will kind of pop a little more. But I kind of just stopped because I thought I don't want to get too far into the white and decide I really don't like it. So I'm thinking I may change that. So then I decided there's a very pale green. There's another, um, you can't really see it. There's another tree starting there. Oh, there you can see it. And um, that green doesn't look good on this linen. And I don't have a lot of that stitched. So I think that lighter green, I'm going to change that color too. And I'm not one that really changes a lot of colors, called for colors on patterns. The reason I buy it is I like what the designer did. And so I kind of just want to do, I mean, that's why I bought it. I like their cover model and I like what they picked. So, shoot. Yeah, I think someone might be pulling up. No, nope, maybe not. You're going to get that a lot. My house is like a revolving door with deliveries and people interrupting. Anyway, um, I usually don't change colors on charts. And, um, but sometimes like that, I will, if my linen, if it's something really doesn't stand out, I'll use the same shade and just darken or brighten it or whatever. So I think that's, that was a little frustrating because I finally got time to stitch and then it wasn't really turning out the way I wanted. And now I have to pull stuff out. So I stopped and I will continue on it again later after I change those colors because I don't really love that white. And I also think, here's the other thing, you know, I'm working in here and it's kind of a dull, you know, it's not a real jazzy area, but I think once I get in like the Union Jack and the bowl of berries and some of these motifs with the reds and then that big thing of grass, it, I think that's also what adds to the chart and makes it really um pop out and look really cute so that was my that was all my stitching for the last week hopefully my next real video with some updates hopefully i'll get some stitching done because you never know oh boy 
Okay. So what else? Okay, so haul. I only got one piece of haul. Um, I got, I don't know if you guys follow 1884 Stitchery on Instagram, but she had done a live, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago. And I might have even mentioned it in my last video. She had purchased the estate of a stitcher that had passed away and got like 18 boxes of, um, I think I had said 15, but I think it's 18. I don't know. A ton of boxes of this stitcher that passed away and purchased that and is putting them on her site. If you've never shopped on her website, she basically has one of everything and she's like buying you know, overstock or shops that have gone out of business, buying the remaining inventory and stitchers send her charts that they aren't using anymore. Um, so she has a lot of interesting stuff and I may, I'm not rewatching my last video. I may have mentioned this before, um, but it's been kind of fun to kind of check it out and scroll and see what she's been listing. Um, if you search under all products rather than by designers or anything, you see a lot more. And last time I did a Kathy Barrick video and I noticed she's got a lot of Kathy Barrick, Carriage House, Chart Makers, which is also Kathy Barrick, um, Barrick Samplers. I mean, she's been uploading a lot in the last week. And so it's kind of been fun to pop over there and see what she's got because, um, you know, she does have some newer stuff, but it's not like when you go into a shop or go on to other online you know, it's older stuff, but it's stuff that's really appealing to a lot of us. And maybe you haven't seen, or it's something that if you go to a shop, you might find if you dig, but I don't know. It's just been fun to kind of check it out and see what she has. And she has a lot of different stuff she's been uploading. This stitcher had some really eclectic tastes. And so I think there's a little something for everyone. She's been uploading a lot of old sampler charts um, a lot of Prairie Schooler on the cardstock, like I said, Kathy Barrick. Um, I don't know, there's too many designers to name. So, you know, it's one of those things where if you are sitting in a car waiting for someone, if you uh, like to scroll on the computer before bed or in the morning with your coffee, um, it's been a fun website to kind of go through and see what she has had in those boxes. I think we would all just love to go. I mean, would you not die to go to her house and dig through those boxes, 18 boxes? Oh my God, that would just be a blast. Anyway, so I had popped in and I found an older sampler chart that um, I was interested in. And I've never heard of this designer before and I've never seen the chart, so I don't know anything about it. But the company or the designer is called Schoolhouse for the Needle, and Schoolhouse, I think that's how you say it, is spelled kind of differently. Um, it's out of Georgia, and it was done in 2007. And the, the sampler is called Laura Ann Ludington. So I like this chart for a few reasons. I love this border here. It's kind of like a droopy strawberry border which is kind of fun. And then you have this real pretty basket of flowers down here and a house, which of course we all love a house. And all this writing here is, um, you know, whatever. But, but up here, it's kind of like a ghost alphabet, which I think is fun. The top alphabet is Algerian Islet, and then there's a second alphabet below it. And it's kind of appealing to me. I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking again, just like all charts, this is probably one that stitched is gonna be a lot, have a lot more appeal than what you see here. And I kind of like that ghost type alphabet thing. Um, you know, an alphabet that's not super, you know, almost blends into the fabric, but doesn't. It gives a lot of texture and stuff. So I thought this was cute and I actually, I got it in the mail. I think this costs like 10 bucks. That's the other thing. A lot of her chart, you know, they're not terribly expensive. She ships pretty quickly. She ships very quickly, like within 24 hours of you buying. Um, and so, yeah, I thought, why not? But then I got it and it's been sitting on my table and I keep looking at it and I'm like, I kind of want to, I kind of want to stitch this. 
It's charted really well. It's not terribly big. It's 243 by 227. And the, um, what do you call it? The model was stitched on 28. So I wouldn't be stitching on 28. So I grabbed the DMCs. Whoa, that's the list of the couple colors I have to find that I have to dig for. But I think this might be a fun one. I don't know. I shouldn't start anything, but it kind of made me want to start that. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my big purchase. And I saw on Instagram, 1884 Stitchery, um, McKenna had done a video. She did a live video and she is, um, releasing, uh, Hannah Lancaster, which is a older, okay. It's a chart that was done by Porcupine Collection. Now I contacted McKenna to see if I could get a thread list because that has been a unicorn of mine for a long time. And I would really love to stitch it and get going on it and pick some fabric and stuff. It's a really big sampler. So she had announced that she's um, gonna be releasing a Hannah Lancaster chart. And so I had messaged her about a thread list and so she explained to me, um, it is not a reproduction. It is not a re-release of Porcupine Collection. Apparently she sometimes works with a designer to bring back charts, not that they're necessarily even out of circulation, but that are older, maybe harder to find, maybe not as many shops have them. And so she's either worked with designers such as like Sheepish Antiques and Sheepish Designs. I know she's redone some of those to release them in a cleaner format, PDF, updated, and the designer gets a cut of the money. Um, she is also apparently working with some of the museums to do some of those really popular museum pieces that have been charted in the past. Porcupine Collection did chart Hannah Lancaster. It's a Worcester Museum piece, but McKenna is not reproducing Porcupine Collection. She is working with the museum to do a chart of that antique. So she let me know the threads are different. Um, her chart will be available in PDF and paper and you know, you can have it in two minutes or you can have it ship in 24 hours. So um, yeah, so I got the thread list and she has it um, listed for DMCs and silks. There's a NPI um, version with hers. And so I got that list and I don't know, I may do some silk packs for it and put them in my shop. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm going to order some of the silks. I don't know what I would stitch mine in. Maybe DMC, but I might want to see the silks first. I don't know. So anyway, she had said, if you watched her Instagram, that she's releasing that on Sunday, which is nice. Um, you know, if you have the porcupine collection chart, I mean, the stitches are the stitches. So when you're, I mean, you know, it's not so different that it's not going to look the same, but it's just, you know, I guess her release is more updated. Um, so I think that's kind of fun. I think, um, her working with some of these museums to, um, get some of their antique samplers, out there in PDF format or accessible or available to um, sell in their gift shop is a good thing because there's some great stuff in those museums. There's also a lot of stuff that's never been charted that I think would be, McKenna, would be fun to chart some of those. There's some good ones. I mean, you see some really good ones in these sampler books that I have. So that's the scoop on that because I know a lot of people, um, you know, we're sharing it and commenting on social media. So I thought since I ordered from her, I will mention it here. Okay. Um, what else? Okay. So speaking of museum pieces and different pieces, one of the other things I'm going to show you is I've been showing some antique sampler books and, um, I grabbed one to show that I think you definitely need. It's not expensive, easily available. And I'm going to show you some pictures in this one. So this one is, this one's a great book if you're just 
wanting to learn, you're just getting into learning about samplers. It's a great reference book and it hits all the marks. It's got um, eye candy and a lot of great information. And especially if you're a little confused about types of samplers in different regions and why they did different things, this is a really great reference book. And I enjoy it. And I will go through this every so often just to go through it. It's very easy to read. So this is a Miller's um, like reference book and it's samplers, how to compare and value. And it's by Stephen and Carol Huber. Now they have a website. Um, they are still active. They are sort of sampler experts and um, collectors and they sell antiques. I don't know the website name. If you Google their name, you can get onto their website. They have some beautiful antiques that are currently for sale to look at. They're a little out of my price range. Um, but they also have pictures of ones they have sold in the past. And one reason I'm telling you about their website is they do sell a lot of um, sampler information books. And I'm positive this one's on there. Um, they don't have a website where you could like order through the website, but they show you what they have and you basically fill out a form and mail a check to them and they will mail you a book. And a lot of what they have is new stock. It's not used copies. So that would be a place if you're looking for this that you might wanna look. You can find this on Amazon and eBay and stuff. Not expensive. So I'll show you kind of how this, um, so basically it talks a lot, you know, the beginning is different things like understanding the market of antique samplers, buying and selling, um, how to care for your antique samplers, all those different things. Okay, so then there's a gallery of samplers and they go, th whoa. they go through different types of samplers and they will tell you different facts and things and I will show you some of these. So, okay, so first of all, I have to show you this. Sometimes the bad thing about going through these books is a lot of times there's ones that have never been reproduced and you would just love to stitch them. Now I know that a lot of people have taken books and from a photo or from photos online charted for themselves to stitch, not necessarily to sell, but um, charted some of these antiques because they wanted to stitch them so bad. And many times I've debated doing that. This is one, this picture is one that I would possibly do that. Um, if you see a picture in a book of a museum piece, especially now with the internet, um, if it's from a historical society or museum and it's something that maybe you would like to chart and stitch yourself, it's a lot easier now than it was back in the day. Um, you can usually call and uh, find out if they will send you photos or if they have photos or if you can use the photos they have online and these museums are very accommodating with that. There is no copyright on antique samplers. Um, okay, I'm just gonna go into this real quick. If you go onto a museum website, not quite so much, historical society websites don't seem to be quite as in depth, but definitely the big museums. If you go onto their website, they usually have the terms of their copyright listed there on the website. Because antique samplers are in the public domain, they don't own a copyright to them. But many times in these museum copyrights, in the copyright, they give you permission to use them for personal and commercial use. If there's exceptions to that, it will be written on the website in the copyright info, right? So um, I'm trying to think. Basically, like if I want to sell t-shirts with the Mona Lisa on it, that is an image that I can take that image from the museum. I can take, I can't take it from another business that has made their own, you know, Mona Lisa image, but that museum, the museum that it's held at lets people use the images of the Mona Lisa. So I am allowed to go make t-shirts of the Mona Lisa and sell them. And I don't have to pay the museum anything because their copyright allows me to do that. And some of these with the samplers, that's the case. And so basically, if you look and if you saw, now I don't know if this one that I love is in a private collection or a museum, but let's say it was in, I don't know, the 
Cooper Hewitt. I would go look at the Cooper Hewitt copyright and if those images and everything is okay for me to use, go ahead and chart it, right? There's some beautiful ones that have never ever been charted and you can spend hours and days looking through these museum online catalogs, which were really beefed up a lot of them during COVID. You can find a million things if you really wanted to stitch them. So that's kind of like a little side note, little info. Because <laughs> sometimes there's, I don't know, you know, questions about could you really do that or whatever, especially if you're stitching it for yourself, you can totally do it. So this is one, oh gosh. And I'm gonna have to look because I don't know if this is a museum piece or it could be one of the pieces that the Hubers had. But I love this one, it's a Rachel sampler. So like that is one that one day I could very well see myself trying to chart it for myself because I would love a copy of that. It's got the house and the pastoral, great border, and it's a Rachel. I would love that. How amazing would that be? I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to see where that actual antique is. It could be something that was theirs. So, okay, so like the book, it like this section's about band samplers. I'll let you know about band samplers. This is English Samplers with Adam and Eve. I tapped this because wouldn't we all want to stitch this one? This one's amazing. I mean, you've got two houses, pastoral, this little cartouche with the name, the deer, the Adam and Eve, the great baskets. I mean, wouldn't that be great? Oh, I'd love to stitch that. I would love it. Um, what section? Oh, here's a section on English samplers from Ackworth and Westtown. Oh, my phone is acting funny. If I can't get through this video, I am going to scream. Okay, so basically I'm going through the book. And this can be choppy, but this is what I wanted to show you in the book. So this section is uh, Rhode Island and Providence samplers. And um, so it talks about them. This one right here, this is Betsy Davis. I'll show you that. That one has re been reproduced by the Exemplary and she has an Etsy shop. And you can buy that kit. In fact, it's one that I recently ordered. Um, that is a, she went to um, Mary Balk's school, who's kind of responsible for this style of sampler in Rhode Island. She went to this needlework school and Betsy Davis is, it's the only example from that region in those schools. This is basically a practice sampler and a lead up to more of the traditional Rhode Island samplers that you see. Scarlet Letter reproduced her second sampler a long time ago and Scarlet Letter is reformatting that in her new updated version of charts which are much easier to read and go through than the older ones and she is going to be re-releasing it. Now I don't know when. Um, her website still says coming soon the re-release of Betsy Davis. So I ordered the first one from Exemplary and the second one when Scarlet Letter um, re-releases it I will order the second and then be able to stitch the two samplers by Betsy Davis. Um, two samplers that look very different, you know, like I did uh, Lucy Calcutt and she did two samplers and they're di they're totally different, but there's a lot of similar elements. And this one, two samplers stitched by the same stitcher, there's not a lot of similar elements. They're very different looking samplers, but the same girl and they're pretty. So that's two companies, each with doing a sampler by Betsy Davis. And I think those are museum pieces too. So this one I thought was interesting. Okay, I love New Jersey samplers. Here's a New Jersey sampler. I think you guys have seen, I stitched Amy Eliza Herbert by Porcupine Collection. And there's a lot of New Jersey samplers that are, um, of that style. You'll see not only Amy Eliza Herbert is in a lot of sampler books as an example of a New Jersey sampler, but there's a lot of girls that did 
um, very similar pieces with the house and then the two side pieces and the sawtooth border and you know this one's different it, this one's different than Amy Eliza but a lot of the elements are similar so they have the similar same same teacher here's another New Jersey sampler now this oh, I totally switched this one look at how cute that is so cute Oh, and here's the last one. Here's a Pennsylvania. I told you I love Pennsylvania samplers, too. Look at that. It's got the little red house, and that border is just killer. Totally killer. God, I'd love to stitch that, too. So much to stitch, so little time. I don't know who I'm kidding. I'm not... I don't know who I'm kidding. I'm not charting this stuff. But I could, if I wanted to. Because it's tempting looking through these books. So this is a great reference book. If you're interested, I thought I would show it to you. It's a must have for sure. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop this real quick because my phone is acting funny. This is not my week for videos. My phone is acting funny. So before I get to my little chart parade designer thing, I am going to stop this and check it out. Make sure that I'm Make sure it's working well. So hang on. Okay. I'm having issues with this phone. Maybe next time I'll be shooting on my laptop because, I don't know, the phone keeps telling me I've reached my maximum recording time. Not that I'm out of storage, but I have my maximum recording time. So it could be a bunch of little videos I have to splice together. We will see. This is going to be awful, but I'm getting you a video. So today I think I'm going to show Plum Street samplers and that was just something easy for me to grab and show you. I have two previous finishes and then I'll show you some charts. A lot of my Plum Street that I've stitched is seasonal and is packed away in um, my seasonal boxes. So some of it you've already seen, some of it you'll see in later videos when I go over seasonal stuff. Um, yeah, I love Plum Street. Love it. And... I will show you two previous finishes. Some of them I've recently shown, and I'm not gonna show you the charts that I've shown. You know, I'm working on American Sampler and then Tuck It Girl, and I've shown those quite a few times in the last few videos, so um, I'm not gonna show them again. I don't remember if I showed this one. I think I did. This is George and Martha, and this is a 32 count, and I just did it in a little pillow. This was really fun to stitch, and it's just backed in like a calico. And we love George and Martha. This will be a good one for the First Ladies. During the First Lady series, I'm going to show different charts that you could, um, not just reproductions that might go with the time period, but definitely charts. You know, there's a ton with George and Marcia, Mar Marcia, Martha. Martha. Um, that would be fun to stitch. So I'm kind of collecting all those charts that I already have and ideas to show you to stitch. Now this one, I don't remember. This one was in my basement. It's super dusty. I didn't even bring it out this fall and I don't remember the name of it. You're probably gonna have to go to a brick and mortar for this one. It's older and I'm sure they can contact um, Paulette to get the chart, but I can't remember the name. Okay, and it's glass, so it's got reflection. So this is, it's basically an Adam and Eve with Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein. Um, I'm trying to get it without, it's got shiny glass. It's just in a thrift store frame. This is like a 32 count vintage country mocha, I think. This was really fun to stitch, but it's not terribly easy to find. I don't think Plum Street um, retires necessarily her stuff, but I know you can't get it from like the distributors. So maybe even a brick and mortar that's been in, business for a real long time might might already even have it so that would be who I would call for that okay so let's just go through Plum Street charts and um you know hopefully my phone won't cut me off so and this is not all of them I have a lot of Plum Street so one that I've shown a few times before and really calls to me a lot lately is um a shepherd's song 
I watched yesterday Lisa Abbey's needlework. She uploaded a video and she's been working on this. It's so pretty. And anytime I see someone working on it, um, it makes me want to, I have all the threads. It really makes me want to start it. I think this one I'm going to do on Thornfield. I think that would be really pretty. So go watch, Lee. if you don't watch Lisa Abbey's needlework, she's really good. She's, um, she's got that Midwestern flair, which I love. I love it. Um, I'm not from the Midwest, but there's something about Midwesterners that's just very, they're just, they're great people. I mean, we have great people all over the country, but you know, every region kind of has a different, I don't know, flavor to it. And Midwesterners are just friendly as all get out and so down to earth. So she is, you know, basically like just watching a friend and, um, she's a fun, a fun video to watch and she loves decorating her house and doing all of her stuff. So I've always enjoyed watching her videos. So check her out. I'll link it at the bottom maybe if I remember her video channel. Um, another one that I've been wanting to start for a long time is, oh gosh, it's in a bag I made myself a long time ago. Liberty's Welcome, and I've shown that a few times. I am going to do this one in soap. Um, Plum Street is one that I do tend to do the called for overdyes. Um, you could do them in DMC, but I think kind of like Brenda Gervais and even Blackbird, I think the way they design with their overdyes and stuff, it really is such a part of the piece and how it looks that when you do the DMC conversion, at least on all of, the, gosh, now I have the hiccups. At least on all of the threads, it doesn't quite look the same. Um, I have stitched her stuff with part DMC and part her called for overdyes. Um, cause she always, there's always a DMC conversion, but you know, stuff like grass and houses and things where it's meant to have variegation. Some of those flowers, it really does a lot of justice to the piece justice to the piece. Um, yeah, so this is one designer that I really don't just use DMC. I tend to use what she calls for. And she does chart some things in silk. Um, those, I, eh, those I think you could go either way. You know, not everybody can invest in the silk. So um, there's that. So I'm going to kind of flip through these really quick because, you know, so, and some of these I've shown, Cereal Bowl Collection Lesson 2. These were sold with the threads. Um, they weren't sold with um, the fabric, but they were sort of like a semi kit, which is nice because they're not full skein. So it wasn't quite as expensive as, um, you know, buying all the overdyes and having to do that. Uh, this is a dress. A lot of these on top I've shown. My Peaceful Home. A cute little drum. I think I said in a previous video I have all the finishing stuff for that. Uh, this one I was really hyped up on a few years ago and I still would love to start it but it probably won't be this year and this is the Crowned Bird Sampler which I love. Um, this is one that she charted in silk, and this one I will do in all DMC, I think. I think. Maybe the red I might do the silk, because that's a beautiful red. Um, so I have that. Oh, this one I'm definitely starting this year. I was chomping at the bit when this came out, and it's one of my favorites she's released in a long time. This and Live on Little. I've got to get that. Hopefully soon. Uh, the Gather In. So I will be starting this this summer. I don't know what um, fabric I will use yet, but this is a definite fall piece for me this year. I love it. Oh, hold on a minute. Okay, watch out people with dogs because my dog is going nuts. I need to just get to a cabin in the woods to make these videos because I have way too many interruptions. My last video, the dog was barking. Making your dogs bark. Not your feet, but your pets. Um, okay. Oh, I gotta 
try and get through this. Okay, so this one I started a long time ago. This was a Norton Craft kit. It was a market exclusive. And since it's been released as its own pattern, Norton Crafts is no longer in business. But it's the beekeeper. This dog's going to keep barking. Someone's walking down the road and barking at her. So this could go on for a little bit, unfortunately. But i got to keep moving. So I started this. The kit came with the threads and the fabric. I don't like the fabric, and that's why I stopped. So that could be a restart at some point. I just didn't love stitching on it. I had a real hard time with it. So that will be a future restart at some point. Uh, I've shown this. This is a market release. God bless America. This one I will probably start this year at Christmas time because I love this one too. This is This Joyous Season. That's a newer release. Um, in Friendship. This one I really want to kit with the threads. The threads are beautiful. Lisa Kindred Stitcher on a while ago. This was a Dying to Stitch exclusive, I think, from one of their retreats. And um, she had stitched it Go look at her old videos. It might even be on her Instagram feed. I'm not sure. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful colors and it's pretty big. Um, I'd like to get all the threads and get that up soon. I won't start it soon, but that one's pretty high on the list. This is Flag Folk. I showed this on my Patriotic. Got that. This is, oh, this is another Georgia Martha. This was a Dying to Stitch um, club piece, and I was in the club. George decorates for Martha. And I have a tiny start on it. This was done on an r, &R linen that was just specially dyed just for this, um, just for this pattern. So, that's it. Don't have a lot started. So that could be worked on this fall. The linen is called 36 Count Colonial Brown. So that is not one that I'm aware of that you can order. Here's an old one. Salem Horn Book. Cute. Here's a fall one. Bounty Sampler. I don't know how many times I can do that. Here's a Yuletide Welcome. I think what I've decided, so there's Liberty, Yuletide, and Ghoultide. I think I might start all three, and then throughout the year I can kind of work on whatever one, whatever season I'm in for each one, and kind of rotate them through the year to sort of get them all going. Um, because the Patriotic after Christmas... I don't mind stitching Patriotic year-round. So the Liberty's Welcome would probably want, be one I'd want to get done first. And then, um, you know, the Fall and Christmas one, I could just have going during that time of the year. This is one that I have started. This will probably be done this fall. This is um, Stranded Jacks. Cute little bowl fillers. Um... This one, um, let's see, Carol, I think, had mentioned in her last video, possibly starting Liberties in. I don't know. I really, I wanted to start this for years. When it came out, I was super pumped about it, and I don't know why I haven't started it. So, probably not this year, because I have so many things with those big houses going on that that's not going to happen super soon. Here's Bless Our Land. I showed that one, I think, for my Patriotic. Um, this one I could start this summer, Cape Cod Keeps. I think that'd be pretty quick. Kind of fun to have out in the summer. <sighs> My Garden House. I think this is a newer one, too. That might have been a, um, that might have been a market release. The Adams Family. That's a fun fall one. Falling. 
I like this one, Little Pilgrims. Those little um, pilgrims, she has a couple of designs with those little figures on there. Here's another cereal bowl collection, Lesson One. So a lot of these are little pillows and things that I could do pretty quick. This one is Remember Me. This is one of those ones that I'll stitch to haunt my kids after they're gone. They'll be like going through my crap and cursing me and then I'll, they'll see this and go, oh. So I'm going to stitch it just so that, you know, remember me. Okay, the Thistle House. Now here's what's funny about this one. I thought this was a fall piece because that to me looked like the Bride of Frankenstein. No, it's not. It's a girl with a big top knot, like a big bun. And I kept wondering, like, why is that fall piece all like pink and brown? It's not, it's just a pretty, it talks about the thistle being the um, national emblem of Scotland. <laughs> but when I first got it and ordered it, I'm like, I don't want to do a fall piece that's all pink and brown. Because to me, that looked like the Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> but it's not, it's just a pretty girl in a white dress. <laughs> so if you thought that too, let me know. Because I just realized that when I showed it yesterday. Okay, Yuletide Shanty. I've shown that one. That'll be a fun Christmas one. Adam names the animals. Cute. Love the colors. Rest a while. Okay, I just showed Rest a while. This is going to be some serious splicing. I really hope this works out because I promised two videos and I can't not deliver. Okay, a Merry Heart. Cute. Summer in Nantucket. Cute. I mean, who doesn't want a girl carrying a flag riding a whale in their collection? Turkey Bay. This one's beautiful. A couple years ago, a lot of people were doing this one. And it looks fun, filling in all those big flowers and stuff. I think there's a lot of stitching in it, but it looks like a fun one. Here's a reproduction, Caroline Broomhead. Nightshade Bird, Betsy's Autumn, I love this one, so cute, Olga's Autumn Stocking, one day I'll do this one, probably not this fall, but everybody that's done this, I mean, it's just amazing, a lot of stitching, but gorgeous, classic plum sheet. Um... Country Winter, Fractor Friends, look at those checkered wings, cute. Here's another Mount Vernon Christmas, Wait, oh, I love Mount Vernon, oh, love it. Mount Vernon with a snowman on top. Actually, I have that one started in my Christmas stuff. 1831 Christmas, cute little sheep. Shepherd's Pie, another one of those tart pieces. I think those tarts would be fun. Again, if you don't have a lot of wall space, some of these are really fun because, you know, they don't take up room. They can be out on display on tables or put in drawers and pulled out at different times of the year, bowl fillers, whatever. Soul Sisters, one's cute. Sampler House Six. Very cute Christmas one. Another fun house to stitch. Goodness and Thanks. This one was, I think this one might have been released around the fall. It's a newer release. Around fall or Christmas. Oh, man. Home for Christmas. I wanted to start this one last year and didn't, so maybe this year will be the year. It's really cute. Labor for Learning. This is one of her earlier ones that she sort of did in that um, Rhode Island sampler style which she's got another one of those coming out, but it's an exclusive that we can't get eventually. There's more of those coming. That's exciting. I love, love 
um, new constellation and all those that she's been doing. John and Abigail. Love that. You know I love that. This one I've been wanting to do for years, and this will be started this um, fall, and I do have the threads for it. This is Jack's Bash. This is another one of those Rhode Island style, but it's um, fall. And, oh, man. I wanted to, I mean, I, I don't know why I haven't started. I was hyped up about that the minute it came out, and I haven't done it. Merfolk's Eden, another summery piece. Summer Hill. Good Company. Some little fox in a house and stuff. See, a lot of these are kind of small. Now, some of hers can be pretty stitch heavy, even if they're small, but, you know. Sampler House 5. Love the color of the house, and I love the checkered roof. My Early Days. This one's very pretty. Very pretty. I'm almost getting through this. <sighs> Betsy's Tart. Another tart piece. Tart. Here's the Pilgrims. A winter one. Flirting. Cute. Merry Friends. Another tart. Penny Autumn. Beautiful. Love that. I love that border. Um, let's see. I have the salt boxes. I'm not even going to show those because you guys have seen them. The only one I don't have is the false salt boxes. I'll have to get that. This is Ann Barson Logbro, 1837. This is a reproduction. Just a simple little reproduction. Wouldn't take long to stitch that. Uh, this is called For You. This is a, um, Christmas piece. Siren Cove. Here we have another um, Mermaids Riding Odd Animals. I think this might be a porpoise. Very similar to Turkey Bay, but a summer one. Rather than a fall piece. This one, I love Carol stitched this, and she's shown it quite a few times, but Pink House Sampler. Carol's is beautiful. If you haven't seen it stitched, go look at her. Go look at Carol Saltbox's video. Carol Saltbox. Liberty Lodge. I just showed these. Sampler House 3. I'm going to go real quick because I just showed these, I think, in my um, patriotic. The Quality Sampler. This is the one that I haven't started yet. I finished the first one working on the second one. This is the third one. Uh, Mariner's Drum. I think that's really cute. I don't know. I guess I'm into mermaids. I didn't realize that. But. This, and I showed this one too. Uh, this was a dying to stitch piece. Grace on me. And you can get this too. I just, I have the kit. Um, let's see. I have some old ones here. I might have shown these. Here's a sweeter love. That one's kind of, kind of cute. Plum Street Antiques, Elizabeth Sarah Oliver. This is a reproduction. It's very pretty. Very packed reproduction. His and hers Thanksgiving stockings. This one I might start this fall because that would be pretty quick and I think those are so cute. And then I showed these before. Betsy stockings, the patriotic. And the last one is my dearest friend. Super cute. So hopefully I didn't flip through those too quick. I apologize, but my phone's acting weird and I don't have as much time as I normally do to um, film. So I think that's it. Um, you know, like I said, I hope I can get, God, now my hair is frizzing out because it was wet when I started this. Um, okay. Splicey, splicey. This whole thing's going to be spliced together. Hopefully it all makes sense and I can do it. Um, yeah, so that's the end of my video, and I will be back. I will upload another one in a couple of weeks, which is pre-recorded. And then, um, I don't know, a week or two after that, a couple weeks after that, I will do a updated current video. 
Today is Thursday. I think if I can get these spliced together, I may just upload it tonight um, or today. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, I don't know if there's any glitch in my uploading dates and stuff. I will, uh, you know, I will remind people on Instagram when um, a video is uploading. And also, if my 40 count comes in, I will immediately be shouting from the rooftops, jumping for joy, posting on my Instagram, and letting people know that I'm starting to work on these orders that have been waiting for months. Um, and I kind of do hope it comes in when I have help here, because that will help me not get behind on some current orders while I focus on those 40 counts that need to get out, so... You know, that's it. And again, I'm going to need to get a Starbucks today when I'm in town because it's just been one of those weeks. So hopefully you're all having a good week and I will see you soon. And um, yeah, have fun and I will talk to you later. Bye.